I'm really pleased to introduce, um, Kapol is going to give the talk, uh, Gilles is still is here in the front row and can, they work together and uh, he held the floor on Friday afternoon and Kapol will hold the floor uh, today, but um, they're both very deeply involved in the kind of work that's gone into what they're going to talk about, um, Carol's going to talk about this evening. Um, I've known them for many years. It's been my pleasure to have the opportunity to work in the part of the world where they are based, which is to Toulouse. Um, I work south of Toulouse. And they have been so hospitable and generous to me and my team. Uh, we've had many evening uh, parties and picnics together um, after a day's work in uh, archaeology in the region. Uh, Carol, uh, as you will see from the description that went with the announcement, uh, holds a PhD. She also holds a degree which is higher than a PhD um, in, in France uh, from a major uh, thesis that she uh, completed a couple of years ago. Um, she is well known for her uh, meticulous work on understanding how prehistoric artists actually made some of the images, the techniques, uh, the body movements, and looking at them microscopically but behind all of that, as I think you'll hear this evening, she's really interested in the behaviors of these peoples uh, that did this, and of course is now currently the director of this um, amazing research team in the Chauvet, or Grotte Pont d'Arc uh, cave in the Ardèche region. She will give you all the background you need on all of this, so without further ado, let me thank them both for coming back to Berkeley. They were here 12 years ago, and it's wonderful to bring them back again, and to, I'm fortunate to spend some time with them this week, and uh, we will now hear from them about, you know, one of the amazing kinds of things that we as humans have done in the past, and please, let us figure out better ways to work in the present and into the future. Thank you. Now. Thank you, um, May. Uh, before I begin, I, I want to would like to thank for the organization of this conference, uh, University of Berkeley and the Lab of Archaeology. Thank you very much for, for that. I would like also to my apologize uh, for my English, uh, which is sometime, um, how shall I say, um, out of uh, normality, <laughs> but I try to speak. Uh, in, in fact, it's my it's the first time for more, for me in English, and uh, it's too easy to read it. But uh, to speak with a lot of people in front of you, <laughs> so okay, we go. Yeah, it's better, I think. Yeah, no. Um, okay. Before I start, I want to give my, my deepest gratitude to Jean Claude. Without him, we wouldn't be here today. And uh, two twenty four the next year uh, will be the thirtieth anniversary of the discovery of the cave by Jean-Marie Chauvet, uh, Eliette Brunel, and Christian Hilaire. It was uh, 80 December 1994. And in January 1995, Jean-Claude came to see us, Gilles and me, in Paris and proposed to work with him in the cave. And we, if we are today here, Gilles and me, thank you, thank you, Jean Claude. After Jean Claude, we are new director. It was uh, uh, Jean Michel Jeunesse since 10 years. And after Jean Michel, I take the head of the team in 2018. And uh, now we work it. March uh, in the cave with uh, uh, 25 people, but not in the same time. And uh, the cave is very controlled by the Ministry of the Culture for the conservation. It's a very important cave, and we need to take all the 
um, procedure for for um, for guarantee uh, of the of the of the of the so I'm I'm sorry. <laughs> For the Soviet uh, conservation, sorry. Upper Paleolithic. What is the Upper Paleolithic? Climate was cold, uh, with the presence of uh, megafauna as mammoths, woolly rhinoceros, megaceros deer, bison, cave lion, cave bear, and reindeer. It's a very special environment for the people of this time. Untergatural nomad, Homo sapiens, like hers. It's uh, probably came to Western Europe between 50,000 and 42,000 years ago. At that time, Homo sapiens was one of the human species present in the Eurasian continent with Neanderthal and also the Denisovian people. Her humanity has adapted to diverse ecosystems and developed biocultural niche environment in which it creates conditions for the survival and demographic expansion. But most important of all was the development of the structured family and social link across long, long territory. Homo sapiens developed a vast social and economic network. This network are one of the major factors in this success. <coughs> From this fundamental niche emerged the essential element of the communication network, the elaborate image. I would be at the center of the system for 30,000 years. It's very important for us because today we are also in teaching. The emergence of the elaborate graphic expression is in fact multifactorial. All elements are interconnected. Cognitive maturity of the species, diversity and complexity of social environment, linguistic level of complexity, emergence of a codified social communication, the image, and the image is what? It's an ayud, another of the mental and the social projection. Homo sapiens illustrate and control the social orality with the image. So, what is the paleolithic art? This diagram presents the main term of paleolithic art over 30 years, oh, sorry, 30,000 years. The percentage database is around 10,000 figures. Animals are omnipresent of the decoration of the object and the wall of the cave. House, bison, deer, ibex, oro are the major protagonists of this bestiary. Without forgetting the mammoth, bear cave, reindeer, lion cave, woolly rhinoceros, etc. etc. One of the distinctive characteristics of Paleolithic art is the low percentage of human figure, around also 6% over 13,000 years. Moreover, representations are hardly um, realistic. For this humanity, the imagery and the storytelling are mainly supported by animal form and not by human form. <coughs> when we consider the bestiary of each cave, we see that scales are integrated into the general structure with some significant variation. In red, at Chauvet, the dominant trilogy is feline, woolly mammoth, and woolly rhinoceros. For example, in green, at Cusca Cave, it's horses, ibex, and deer with presence of sea animal because the cave was near the, the sea. 
Homo sapiens extract from the, this daily environment resources of this imagination, but always in the common structure for each case. The form of operative culture, the chronology of art, it's a relative, re, sorry, relatively long and your time scale. But the art is for, it's not a, a big scale when you compare the art as the history of human population. So we need to know that we have more time between the Shoveke, around 38,000, and Lascaux K, 17 times. That's Lascaux and us. In terms of generation, it's a very, very long period for the knowledge of this art and the knowledge of the archaeology of this art. Because in France, we don't have only drawing on the cave and uh, field when you make excavation. For understanding and for our knowledge about the, the anthropology of the human from, from Paleolithic. So, we take a plane uh, from uh, San Francisco to, to Ardèche Valley and uh, we go in the Ardèche Valley and you see, you can see the localization of, uh, of Chauvet Cave it's, uh, uh, near the Valley, Rhone Valley. The team is uh, 30 researchers from France, Spain, US, Norway and the uh, University and the National Center of Research in France of Ministry of the Culture. This team is built for interdisciplinarity. For me, it's an essential way to opening up your scientific approach. It's very important to cross uh, different views and different science, uh, scientific uh, uh, research for understanding this population. The Chauvet it's uh, in the Cirque d'Estre. You can see here, it's, uh, it's uh, um, the, the bed of the, of the Hardesh here. And here, you have the mouth of the cave. It's a 3D reconstitution. Uh, and you can see that this cave in the landscape it was a big mouse and it was possible to see uh, um, very well when you are in the in the bed of the of, of the of the river. The so Chauvet Cave it's a huge cave. You have a 160 feet long and you can see here the 3D model uh, the strain profile uh, from, uh, from the, the cliff here at the end of the cave here. The red dots is in fact the Paleolithic entrance. And today we enter through the ceiling in fact. With a lot of security. Entrance is in fact the entrance of the discovery, and at this time, uh, uh, the uh, Jean-Marie Chauvet and, uh, and Eliette Brunel have just sorry protect the archaeological floor, we work on the footbridge, metal footbridge. We only leave the metal footbridge on art floor where there are not archaeological remains at the surface. Most of the time we work from the safe distance because we wouldn't be able to access the wall and the floor. 
we have developed a 3D method for the floor and for the wall to help us to in uh, analyze and an interpretation of archaeological fact. And you can see the circulation of the metal footbridge here and here the technique for the 3D uh, with, a, with a distance. You can see this is the actual entrance of the cave, the little movie, and we work here. And you can see this cave, it's very fantastic. Uh, very nice for archaeology treatment, but also very nice for the geology of the cave it's itself. The chronology uh, of this cave, it was a uh, it, it's very important to speak about that. I know I, I just uh, make a, a few reasons for that, but uh, Shoemaker, it's important for the Paleolithic because in 1995, when the first date arrived, it was a, I don't I can see, a revolution. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really the term. Because uh, the date was very old, for 35,000. And for archaeologic people in this time, it was impossible to have uh, uh, this drawing and this time of uh, evolution of people, of Paleolithic people. But now we know that it's possible and uh, uh, we will see, uh, you will see that the drawing are really like a, 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 an analysis of uh, art uh, for, the, for the 14th century. Or, uh, it's the same way we are with people they have a, a, a maturity, cognitive maturity, and maturity of the drawing very early in the time of uh, evolution of Homo sapiens. So, uh, here you have a, a, a model a sketch about the, the collapse and the, the, the collapse of the cliff for block the entrance of the cave, and uh, we have a, a, a little, uh, a lot of phase of. 14,000, when the, the first uh, individual can enter into the cave, are, are bears, in fact, cave bears. And uh, uh, after, and the 37 or 38 uh, origination people, they are coming for, for drawing, for, for make drawing, fire, and uh, for inscribe on the wall uh, their mythology. And, uh, you have the three uh, important elements. It's the collapse of the cliff and the 29,000, uh, 23, and 21. And we can, we can say uh, today that after 21, it was impossible for uh, uh, human people entrance in the cave. The cave is closed for human. And that is very important. Because uh, um, at the discovery of the cave, uh, uh, archaeologists said, "No, it's not possible because uh, it's too it's too nice." And uh, this cave, it's uh, also the Magdalenian. Magdalenian is uh, uh, um, the 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 end of the of the Paleolithic uh, Upper Paleolithic. Or Orinian, it's the beginning of the Upper Paleolithic. And you know the distance. Uh, 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 for that. And we know now uh, 21,000 it's close. It's uh, definitely not close. For that uh, we use the chlorine 36 dating method uh, and it's very precise and for the painting we use a 14, C14 for the drawing, uh, made with charcoal, because we we need uh, organic substance for the for, for the for the dilatation. So, also we can interpret that we have two uh, step uh, of the realization in the drawing in the cave. Uh, the first step uh, for the orientation between more or less. 37, 34, a thousand also, <laughs> and for the gravitation, 31, 29, uh, 
and it's just a two uh, um, period for the human activity. We have in the cave a lot of wildlife uh, independent of human activity. Uh, the more important it's, uh, of this diversity, it's near the porch the, of, of the cave here. But we have also, you can see the gray dots, it's difficult, it's difficult. Uh, the gray dots are uh, the bear cave, in, in the, the representative of the bear cave, element of the bear cave in the cave. You can see, for example, for the ibex, the skeleton element here, and you can also see in the cave, full print in the cave. So, the cave bear is very significant. This presence is very important in the cave, with bone, bed bear, bed, bear pet, sorry, and full print. We have around 190 individual uh, in, in, the, in this hand sample. You can see, huh? you see uh, the head of the bear, you can see here, and my colleagues on the metal footprint for study the, the bone. Bear bear are very important in the cave. You can see this depression. In fact, it's a bear when he, he comes in the cave for the Hibernation? Hibernation? Hibernation. Hibernation, sorry. <laughs> uh, they, they, they made a bed there for all the window. And we can see we have a, a, some sleeping area close the entrance here, but the abundant sleeping area uh, are in the, at the end of the cave. They are present also with a few stretches in the first room. And uh, you can see they scratched the, the wall for the territory. And uh, you can see here the, the drawing from Gilles, uh, the female bear with the two teddy bears. And we can see on the wall here, scratching, and you see scratch from teddy bear, and also on the clay. The bear is very important because in Chauve Cave it's the first time that we have interaction between cave bear and human. It's the first time for all cave in the world. And in this panel you can see a, a, a cave lion here too, one familiar and one male. And you can see uh, the head lion on the scratch of the bear. But if you see the back, you can see the scratch in, on the, uh, overlap the lion. And we have here the proof that we have interaction in the cave between human and bear. And how can explain that? How human say, yes, I can go in the cave because the bear is not here. The cave bear is a very big one. Big, big one. More big than a grizzly one. <laughs> and uh, 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 also, we can explain that for the knowledge of the animal by Paleolithic people. A very good knowledge. And we also, the, the, the artifact give us uh, also um, a chronology, relative chronology for the uh, use of the cave by human. Because humans saw that bear are in the cave in the winter and people in the cave between two winter seasons. In the cave, uh, we can see also phone print, phone footprint tracks, uh, and here you have phone print from a female uh, bear one and a teddy bear, and you can see also the 
in France, we say for the for the front front leg the hand, and for the back leg the foot, like first for the for the bear. And here you have one hand and one foot. Human action, and also we are in the salle du crâne and human action with bear skeleton. And this, at the center of, the, of this big uh, chamber, we have a, um, a bear skull placed on the rock, and the rock fallen from the ceiling. This skull is not alone in this uh, room, and other skeleton elements are also present. We need time for study the room more closely in order to draw conclusion. So, we have an, an archaeological fact. We are sure that the skull didn't climb onto the rock itself. <laughs> or oh, it's there, I don't know. But we know that. And it's difficult today to say we are in front of a bear culture. We, we can't, I, I can't uh, say that today, because we need more time for this study, and it's very, very difficult because this area is very fragile. We have uh, in the cave some, the term fireplace is so difficult because it's not fireplace, structured fireplace. It's more charcoal on the soil with a, with a block. And uh, we know that when you are in the cave, you, you, you need light to see. And you need uh, light and you need to produce charcoal for the drawing. In fact, you can see uh, the, the um, very um, charcoal place with a, a very big piece of charcoal. And just behind you have this uh, very nice house. Here, house. So, we know now in the cave that we don't have the reality, the fireplace, but we have on the ceiling of the rock some um, indirect evidence of this fireplace because we have a rubrified patch on the wall, on the ceiling. And you can see the red dots, it's are the, the, the place where we can see this artifact. So, uh, we are in the Megaceros gallery, so 3D, uh, a piece of the 3D, and you can see here the rubrified part. You are the, the red and the gray here, it's not natural, it's uh, from the fire. And here, the uh, pink color, here and here. So, at this place, we have a very big fire, around 40 degrees and, uh, of, um, comment on traduit, 40, uh, en degrés. Um, ouais. 40, 400 uh, degrees of uh, intensity of fire. It's very, very important. Or, which um, we can see also here and here, the limestone is white because uh, the fire strutting spot of, uh, of a limestone in the cave. So, we don't have the fireplace on the ground, on the floor, but we are on the ceiling or on the wall, uh, artifact that we can understand and interpret the fireplace. We are at the beginning in the cave, at the beginning of uh, just here, the periodic entrance is here, and we, we can see this place, the name is Salle Brunel. In this place, you can see um, red dots on the wall, here and here. And these red dots 
It's like a rhino, woolly rhino with a back, with a head, and with a horn here, and the and the front leg and the back leg. In fact, it's dots, but not really dots like a, a circle. When we can uh, study the dots more close, you can see that it's fact it's a palm of the hand. And they put a palm in the red color and they put a palm on the wall for the for the, for create dots. And when we close a little bit more, sometimes we can see the finger of the palm. Here. So it's very interesting because they use the, the, the hand for dots and what is the interpretation and uh, it looks like a, it's not a, a hand print of the wall but just that and uh, it's a contact between uh, the human and the wall in this case too. We move a little bit more in the cave and uh, at the area of the red panel gallery. It's very nice, nice cave. And uh, the red calcite that you can see on the ground uh, was not present in the Paleolithic time. But also today, uh, it's a very nice cave with a, a red, orange calcite, white calcite on the, on the wall and on the floor. And it's very fantastic. So, in the red panel, you can see the composition of, the, of this panel, and you can see um, it's difficult to study him because we have a, a five meter of the distance between the wall and, and us. And uh, at the bottom of the image, you can see the tracing. Um, so, uh, we record all visible human and animal uh, action of the panel and we want to investigate the technique and the processes for the artistic creation to understand the way uh, how people have uh, uh, the knowledge to, to organize out this, uh, this uh, figure and uh, to create uh, the figure. So, just a picture, you can see the big, big red rhino that we can, uh, we know that this, this uh, element is a female rhino because uh, they have a big home and we know that with a, with a frozen animal and, uh, and Siberian. You can see the end print here and sign, uh, and W sign here and other rhino here. And uh, this rhino is very important because uh, in this panel is the first time that we can um, see uh, engraving with red pigment. And when we use the oblique line, we can observe very fine engraving line on the wall in this part here. But it's, I think on the screen it's very, very difficult. Don't you need to, to, <laughs> to imagine it? <laughs> But with the tracing, you can see uh, uh, another reno, big reno, just here. And in fact, the uh, engraving are, are white, but uh, on the tracing are, are black here. So we need to, to, to understand, um, study a panel in Chovekev or in other can it's the same. We need to organize the lines for not only uh, uh, see the, the, the pigment, but also our engram. So, in this panel, you can see here the very nice mammoth with the tomb, the finger of the tomb, and the front leg, and the head here, the lion head, with the dots, like they are, he, he have a, um, uh, he is speaking. It's a, it's like the the, the, the speak. And and print. And certainly, the more famous hand stencil of the cave 
the red line, red one, with the, uh, the back here of the mammoth, black back of the mammoth. And we can see the view of this panel. When we have on the back the entrance uh, for the for the for the side hilaire and uh, at the end of the cave. So, in fact, the side hilaire are involved from the Galerie du Cierge here, and we are on the back here, this panel. And we arrive in the big, huge uh, uh, chamber with a big collapse at the center here. And the, the, the bare skeleton on the rock is here. And you have the panel of horses here and the way to go in the side du fond. You can see um, how we work in the cave on the metal of uh, um, footprint with a very special light uh, and uh, it's very very good uh, uh, work. So uh, the panel of engraved horses it's very famous one with um, the big big horses here and two mammoths one here another one here under the, the first and um, you can see the uh, little mammoth and the back uh, of the bison here and the horn of this bison here and here and here a bear. That is a very important panel. This panel is important because it is engraved with hand and finger. Uh, the surface of the limestone is very smooth and it's possible, in fact, to engrave the limestone with the hand. And it's very important because you can see all the process of the creation and all kind of the, of the action of this panel. We can see the, the, the horses and here you have the head, you can see them high and you can read in fact all the gesture of uh, artist um, here you have the, 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 the head just <coughs> with the finger here and here and for the high just a chuck like that and for the bag in the belly of the horse just like that it's very efficient and very dynamic uh, uh, drawing. And the exceptional style of preservation of the cave, you can identify it, look at that, the raw material here in suspension in the hair, like uh, 37,000, it's incredible. And you can see very, very nice uh, superimposition, this, this, uh, this uh, engraving on this engraving. And for us, when we can approach the panel, it's very easy to understand the processes of the creation. So, we go now at the Harum Horses uh, area. And you can see the old campsite at the center of the cave here. And the sector is here. And I hope that it's okay. It's a 3D model, a piece of the 3D model of the sector. You can see here also the lion, bear and horrocks.
So I know the frustration when we can't go in the cave. <laughs> I try to give you image. And it's really incredible. So, um, we are in the sector with uh, 51 drawing in, uh, in charcoal and we have a uh, datation. All um, drawing, black drawing in the Cavendish sector are origination. So you can see the tracing, but um, uh, it's, uh, uh, we are working with Gilles on this panel and uh, uh, for us it was really fantastic. It's like uh, to study uh, uh, one Léonard de Vinci or, or the ceiling of the 16th chapel. Uh, for me, for us, it's like that. And um, it was very impressive. And uh, uh, in fact, I, I don't have words for describe my emotion when I, I was uh, just in front of this panel. So, now. We can see some image of a rhinoceros, a, 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 a baby one here, and uh, here another one with the black uh, belly here, another one under the auroch. The auroch are very, very big and huge with uh, very special homes um, projected uh, behind them. And uh, we, are, we, we always speak about the technique in, in few minutes. And uh, the famous horses, uh, they are very, very, very nice. So, we know uh, the technique for the realization of this figure. People use a charcoal in two action. As outline, uh, the, the the shape and as a raw material to the stump. And it's uh, incredible but true. The wall is in fact the support of the drawing and the raw material for the drawing. And you have here a piece of charcoal and you have the white of the limestone and you have also here um, some um, uh, brown color of the uh, uh, of the clay, sorry. And when you mix charcoal, white of the limestone, a brown of the clay, you really the stamp, and the stamp it's a gray, black, or gray brown or black brown and you can use this color for the charm and for, and for the, the, the volume of the figure. And each action are made with hand. And you can see, in fact, in this picture, a uh, piece of color and mixed. And if you, if you see, in fact, the, the rock, you can see the movement of the hand for the trunk, here, 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 and the brown gray color and the gray, it's uh, like an actual artist. And in some cases, animal heads are highlighted with a flint. The gesture, in fact, finalizes the drawing implantation, and for this very nice head of course. You can see here the eye lighting with a flint, with a very, very gesture, very precise, very rapid, and uh, uh, it's incredible. It's like uh, when you're drawing with a uh, charcoal, it's impossible to have a, um, a line, very precise line. And you need to highlight in this line with a flint for have a very nice contrast between the white of the panel of the wall and the black of the figure. It's possible to 
to have a summary of the technique uh, that we can find in the in the in the cave. We 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 can do drawing just with a finger, with a hand of the of the wall, or with charcoal. Or we have the more uh, 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 important technique when you prepare the wall before so you draw it with a charcoal and you prepare. You have the drawing with the charcoal, you start with the hand, you outline the figure, and this phase here, it's the phase that we can find at the end of the case. So, with the technique, we have a relationship between each panel in the case. And it's, the important is not the color, because we can't find this technique with a red color. It's just how we can make it and why we want to make it like that. So uh, we we have study also we have studied also the superimposition of each figure and uh, uh, for each drawing and each line of the drawing. And with this information, we can understand how the drawings are made and we can propose a creative model of the figure after all the, of the panel. You have the raw surface, and the first action is by bear. <laughs> it's better. Um, the first protagonist, it was the bear uh, on the wall, scratching. And after, at the, at the, at the bottom, at the, at the top, thank you, of the panel, we have some engraving with a, one mammoth and one uh, rhino. After you have the preparation of the wall and um, some little figure that is impossible to say, uh, to, to have the chronology because we don't have the uh, superimposition. But the big figures are on the little one, and the first of them is the Torino at the bottom, and the beginning is uh, uh, from uh, the right to the left. After the three aurochs to the, uh, the top to the bottom, and at the end the horses, with the same processus uh, from the top to the bottom. The composition art run from the bottom to the center. And at the center, in fact, you have uh, this horse, horse, and it's the focal point of view of the viewer that if we are in front of the panel. And we can understand now why they are this quality of the drawing for this, uh, for this uh, figure. I give you some picture uh, that's a little alcove just after this panel. You can see and the three horses are very, very exceptional with the same techniques. And also the two lions, one uh, female here and uh, uh, yeah, sorry, the female and the lion, and uh, you can see the also the old detail of the head uh, with the sperm, with the two eyes here, one out of the of the line of the head, and one here, and uh, some uh, red uh, red uh, thing on the on the on the on the neck, and. You can see also the detail of the the, the figure view uh, by a, a cultural way and the reality of the lion. And we can see that the paleotypic ball has a, a, a real knowledge of the of the of the real animals. But it's not a real animal. It's a it's a view. Uh, through the, the, the cultural way, and that is very important. It's not a photography uh, from the outside of the cave. And uh, the lab chamber, the same, it, the name is uh, Side du Fond. 
It's a hand on the hand of the of the of the cave. I try to make something for you. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. I, I take another way, it's better, but I won't, but. Oh, no, please. Yeah. You are at the entrance of the, of the chamber of the of the left panel, and you can see the two lions that you saw uh, at the beginning with the bare stretching and the head and and the back, on the back, and now choose. So 3D it's important because you can see the cave. Like we it's impossible to see in, in, when you are in the cave. Um, this panel, it's a. It's a. And so the, the lion panel is 2.5 meters long. The head lion said are almost life size. And that's in the cave, it's impossible to see that. That for us it's impossible to 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 to, to work uh, in this space of the cave, and we we do that with a, a perch, a, a long a long stick with a with a camera.
So you can see the holes in the alcove, and you have the same structure that the also panel in the inner chamber, with the alcove in the center and two panels on the right and on the left. And for the scale, this hair are um, as the same uh, uh, dimension that a, a real lion. So, we can imagine, it's difficult to imagine what was the real um, uh, impression of the painted people in this cave and in this chamber. Because the, the little 3D movie, you have a, a light, a constant light, but it's important to, to imagine that in the Paleolithic it's just a firelight. And for them it was impossible to see the cave that you can see it now and you have the shadow, and uh, it was impossible to see all the panels in the same way. You have a focus, but never in the, in the, in the, in the general view, and that is very important. Also, it's difficult to imagine the movement of the body in the cave, because the ground is not flat. You have a bare bed, you have a, a, a wall, you have a, it's very difficult and you have the torch and, and, and the hand. And uh, it's important also to understand that the cave, it's an uh, architecture for the figure. In fact, it's architecture for the storytelling of the Paleolithic people. And up, I uh, put some images, and you can see the same technique that I speak uh, about a uh, horse panel with the uh, outline, uh, with uh, everything. And uh, the big house, uh, the big head of flying. And uh, if you can see, under the black lion, you have the red, uh, red. Um, Red um, point and line, and with this trash, and I am so proud to <laughs> to use this stretch with the person that that create this stretch in this room. And thank you very much. <laughs> and when we use this stretch, you can see that in fact you have the same structure in red that in black. Uh, and I can uh, speak about you exceptionally today that now we know that the black figure of lion are uh, dated that 38,000. And it's possible to see that, that the red painting are more ancient than 38,000. It's not published for the moment, but uh, it's coming. <laughs> The black, the black, the black. It, it's it's possible just a 14, a C14 for the black because it's charcoal, and it's impossible for us to to have a date for the red. But for that, it's very important to have a, 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 a high level of precision for the for the black painting. So you can see the rhino. Uh, with the eye lighting, with the black uh, uh, outline, and uh, and this uh, it's a very uh, incredible, incredible uh, the the multiplicity of the of the home of the back. Uh, it's uh, uh, a lot of rhino, or just uh, uh, the movement of one rhino. Uh, it's very important. It's difficult to 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 go away. But you can see the technology and the, on dit, la, la sûreté, uh, the, the good way of the gesture. Uh, it, it's, uh, 
if you are if you try to, to, to draw on the on the wall you, if you make an error it's it's finished and you don't have error of the drawing in this part uh, baby mammoth here with a uh, uh, leg with a ball and uh, we we will speak about this part of the of the panel. Uh, for speaking about this part of the panel, Jean uh, make a, a, a sketch because it's more more uh, easy. But you can see lion, bison here, and uh, for more visibility, uh, was the sketch. So, we perceive the complex of the world and impression, and uh, this impression is um, related to a single graphic space. You have two, two lines that define the, the shape of the space, of the graphic space. On the horizontal and vertical, on the two edges of the wall, and in fact, you have a frame here. In this frame, the viewer A's are attracted by the air of the lion. The black pupil here with a white background, and uh, it's uh, for her, it's a very attractive uh, element of the, of the head of the lion. In fact, uh, the lion uh, forcing the visitor to, I'm sorry, to press, uh, to have a perception of um, of the horizontality. You have the head; they are uh, on the on the front, and the leg here, and the hives. Also, we can. We have the same rules for the bison, but in the verticality. And the end, and the organization is very, very clear. And you have a conflict between the lion, the horizontality of the lion, and the verticality of the bison. In fact, we can interpret that like um, uh, um, uh, like a sand, and uh, it's like the, the lion go on the head of the bison, and the head of the bison, and suddenly turning toward us here, and here you have uh, on the verticality just the head of the bison, and the head they are looking us, they are looking the viewer in the room. This interpretation of this panel uh, is very simple. We are before the representation of the predation. Lion points of the peasant have filled. And uh, one bison here uh, on the left, at the top, filled at a different direction for the rest of the, of the hair. He escaped at the fatal destiny of this congener. And the fact that you have the ears the bison tone, uh, towards the spectator, you have what the name is in France, uh, joint attention. Attention. I don't know if we can translate like that. But it's uh, very important because, remember, you have just the light of the torch. And you can see that in the, in the same way. And the bison come uh, toward us, and this action implants the spectator in the scene. And if we have the mythology here, we it's a storytelling about a lion and a carnivore and herbivore, and you have a spectator, and certainly you have one human that speaks about the storytelling. 
and the storytelling it's what well, it's a fi animal figure but a storytelling of human action but it's not finished you have the panel here and in front of this panel you have the pendant here and on the pendant you have lion bison and the body, the bottom of the body of the woman. And I put just on the left the Croatian uh, uh, statuette here. And you can see that here and here is the same. We are what? If we can, if I can try to explain what I think, but I have. Um, Nothing for proof that, but for me, for Gilles, Tosello, and others, we are a mythology of uh, the life and the dead. And you have the body of the female that it's alive, and you have the lion on the head of the peasant that's dead. And in fact, it's a life of Paleolithic people. You need to death for life. You need to eat for life. The special organization, perfectly illustrated by the graphic talent of the maker, constitutes the repertoire of the quality of the individual who were involved. According to gender, age, and cultural background, different brain mechanisms are applied for the treatment of space as a drawing. And with the show we came, we know today that it's not a, um, it's important to, to understand and to see the drawing, not also panel by panel, but in the room of the, of the chamber. The chamber is like a scenography of the storytelling for these people. We know also today that the image, it's the beginning of the image for how spacey, for how, for us, because we are homo sapiens. sapiens. And we know today that the image, it was the beginning in Chauve. And you can see the rock art in Africa, in the US, that the image is very important for people. And for people in the past, here, or here, or also here, and also people for the present. Thank you very much. I am very sorry for my English. <laughs> So, at the beginning, I want to, to explain something for the sound, but uh, my, um, the, the folder for the sound is not good, in fact. Uh, since two years now, we are working with the uh, Stanford University and the lab of uh, John Choni, uh, the Karma, uh, for understanding the sound in the cave. Uh, for us, it's very important because uh, the sound is not also the music, it's also the voice, it's also the sound of the fire, it's also the sound when you work on the clay. And, and uh, we want to understand all of uh, all of the uh, effect of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and Today, it's possible to do that because we have the 3D. And with the 3D, it's possible to have a, a, a model of the sun in the cave. And uh, 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 the team of Stanford work about that. They, they capture sun today with a, all, um, all uh, defiance, with a, a metal uh, foot. Uh, 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 for, for the uh, the side, the side more, sorry, and after they work on the lab to extract uh, the false sound, and 
after they reintroduce the good sound and the 3D model. That it's a very long uh, work, but uh, uh, the first um, uh, the first song that we can hear, it's very interesting. Yeah. You have on the. I can. I can give you after. Um, uh, Stanford uh, gave on the internet some uh, a general example of that. But it's very the beginning, and uh, um, it's uh, it's very interesting for us. And we are happy to 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 have the the, the sound on the cave. Uh, since uh, 38,000 years ago, but it's not really uh, the final result of the research, and in fact, it's just the beginning. And we have a, a, a French people that uh, she, the name is Luna Valentin. She worked on the PhD in Stanford for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> So, for that we use uh, this stretch, and uh, um, uh, so in chem it's uh, difficult because we have uh, on the wall uh, a calcite deposit, and uh, sometimes it's not uh, it's not work uh, because a calcite it's um, it's um, an, have an effect of uh, uh, of the of the. Um, um, for for the visibility when you have a picture and uh, for us too, but uh, uh, I saw I think that we we have all the figure today in the cave and uh, with a, we don't have an uh, other other surprise. <laughs> and, pff, I'm so sad, but. Uh, <laughs> Gilles, if you want to say something. <laughs> How many people were making the Ah, the doctorate. Is there any way? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a very complex uh, question because uh, the, the first part of the answer would be that uh, the C14 gives us uh, sort of marks between uh, 30 and 36,000, something like that. And uh, that means that you have uh, at least 6,000 years of human frequentations in, in the cave. That means in terms of generation, it's more than 250, or I don't remember exactly. And I, we noticed that, uh, so you have a very long period of time, and it doesn't mean that people went every year or every day in the cave. Eh? It's uh, just a, a, a general frame. But and that means also that if you look at, the, for example, the rhinos that uh, Carol showed, showed you, um, if we make a, a general uh, uh, survey of all the rhinos, then you see that they, they have uh, much de details in common. Uh, whatever the, the color or the technique that has been uh, uh, made, that means that if they are red or engraved or black, um, you have the same way to, make, uh, to draw the ears or, or the horns or certain details of the eye and so on. That means that, of course, it is not the same person who made the, all this uh, uh, drawing during 6,000 6, years. That means that you have an, an, something, something like an apprenticeship. And the, the knowledge went, was transmitted from one generation to another. And they, they had a sort of uh, probably um, uh, 
way, a special way of drawing animals that was special to this group. And they were transmitting that. And this is also, uh, now it's a, a, a very uh, a problem to see how many individuals have worked. If, because if you have such a cohesion, such a homogeneity of, uh, uh, of drawings, that means that it's really difficult to isolate uh, uh, you know, a personality on, on, on such a group. But it is possible sometimes on very tiny details and uh, I don't have the feeling, for example, if you, uh, if you have in mind the, the black figures, the black drawings that, you know, uh, are the, uh, the most important, I mean, they are iconic to the, to the cave, and they are the most elaborated figure we have, the most uh, works, uh, elaborated works of art. And if you look at these groups and these panels, uh, I don't have the feeling that there were many people. I wouldn't say one, but maybe three, four, something like that. We don't know exactly how, how they were working. If only one was a master and then you had a, you know, apprenticeship of if they were working two or three together. But something like that, it's a very uh, a few people that were at that time, uh, I don't know, I think I already said on Friday, but I think that at that time and for the, this cave, we can for sure say that some of these artists was re, were really some visionary, you know, they were com completely in, in advance or they were thinking about problems that, uh, that were concerning all the, the, all the artists forever. And for example, the, the, the way of, of uh, how tell, how, how is it possible to uh, represent, to, to think about, or to, yeah, to figure, the, uh, to draw in image a story. How can you tell a story? Uh, Carl showed you how. It's, it's a really unique in, in that case. And there are also all these rhinos accumulated on, on the panel that try to explain, express probably some kind of researches. Uh, uh, artist researches on perspective. How can I represent a herd, uh, one animal in the foreground and, the, and others and so on. That's really uh, uh, something, you know, it's difficult to imagine that we, because most of the time when we think of these people, we see them like, you know, they were uh, uh, spending not most of the time uh, Praying food, uh, searching food, and uh, they were not. They don't. They don't have leisure, or they don't, don't have time to think of every, everything else. But in fact, you, you see that they have in the head, in the brain, uh, and in the head, uh, such a uh, human. You know what, what is perhaps the, the most. Uh, the best part of humanity, I mean, the way that they were able to create in art and to uh, not, not only uh, uh, simple art just to you know draw something on the wall, but thinking of you know problems and uh, questions that were, as I said at the beginning, that they were concerning concerning artists of all periods, even long long after the. the, the the, the end of the Paleolithic. One more question, Simon. Is, oh. <coughs> Is there any indication that children may have made any paintings? Yeah, it's also a very good question. Uh, it could happen because uh, it, um, when I talk about apprenticeship, that means that young people are, you know, concerned in the first place. And that means that probably they were, but do they have the right to, you know, make touch the wall? Really, in the cave, would they have the right to only to train outside the cave? That's. But some some drawings are quite not not all the drawings are, you know, uh, exceptional. Uh, 
work so bad. Some of them are really so quick design and uh, it could be some attempts of you know, young people. <laughs> yeah, it could be sometimes it could be a bit out of reach, you know. But yeah. there are also uh, drawings made uh, close to the ground. You have one more question, sir? Yes. <laughs> Do you know the three film by the director of Yeah. Yeah. They were in it. Do you think it's a good film? Yeah. We 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 were in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a good. It's, yeah, which is a good movie for two thirds. <laughs> the end. The end is really surprising. The end with a black, with a uh, white uh, crocodile. Yeah. And, uh, something and no, probably a, a, a pure, you know, invention. Or I don't know. Maybe he was born about the prehistoric art. That's too much. It's very Werner Herzog. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, we uh, we wear young. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> well, I think we've really unfortunately gone over our time tonight, um, and we thank you for being here. We'll take a few minutes at the end if you have a little question you didn't want to ask in front of other people. Uh, but uh, thank you, Carol, for such a detailed talk that I think gave us a really good sense of what's there and how you have been able to do the kind of detailed research so that you can bring that to us in different media and different formats. And uh, of course, I know Gilles can work with you. Thank you. And uh, thank you.